In this video I'm going to show you how you can connect your Arduino to your HTML5 game. Or more specifically, how you can control your HTML5 game from your Arduino, uh, from a sensor connected to your Arduino. Um, okay, so yesterday I made a little HTML5 game. And uh, let me show it real quick. And right now it works uh, uh, by using the keyboard. So I'm now using the, the keys on my keyboard to uh, to fly the thing. Fly the paper, play around. Um, but what I want to do, I want to... I don't want to use the keyboard, I want to use something on my Arduino. So I have a potentiometer, for example, which is a little thing over here. And when, um, and you can twist this little pipe over here. You, you can turn it around and rotate it. And when I want, uh, when you rotate it, I want the, the, the paper plane to rotate with it. Which isn't happening right now, because it's on my keyboard. So I'm going to show you a little bit about the code of the HTML5 game. Really, really clear, quickly. Okay, so... Um, this is the whole, whole game logic, and um, here I have a couple of of here I have um, functions which, which you can bind to to key events. So right now it works on when, when pushing buttons on your keyboard, like up, down, left, right. And uh, I, I want to change it to the potential meter. So here I have the 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 functions that listen to the keys. So I, so I bind them over here. Um, and then over in my draw function, I calculate the new position and the new rotation, so the angle of the of the paper plane based on if if someone presses the button yes or no. Uh, so I do that over here. Um, I do it every frame again and again. And then uh, based on those numbers, I, I generate the new position and the new rotation. And oh, this needs to get out. And and then over here, I draw the the the, the, the whole thing again using the new numbers I just calculated. Uh, that's basically HTML game. It's really, really simple, really, really small. And um, I want to, to, I don't want to use this part. I don't want to use this code. I want to use the, the Arduino code and potential meter stuff. So, so then I have a problem because you can't hook up your, your Arduino to your web page directly. You have to use something else. So I made a little picture of that. So uh, in my case, the Arduino holds the data of where to position the paper plane. Um, and you, it needs to get in the HTML5 game. That's the end result. That's where it needs to be. So you need to have something in the middle, and I'm using Node.js for that. But you can also use something else like Python or whatever. And I use, uh, use Node.js here for two reasons. And the first is that uh, my HTML5 game is written entirely in JavaScript. And Node.js is also JavaScript, so it really um, makes it a lot easier for me. So that can, and can just write everything in one language. And the other advantage is that Node.js has a high-level module, which is called, which is like a, something you can install for Node, which handles a bunch of low-level um, stuff for your Arduino. So you just uh, you just install this, and then you have uh, an interface for talking to your Arduino really, really easily. Um, I made another video of that, and you can check it out here. But um, now I'm gonna assume you already seen the video or you know how, how something like this works. So um, I'm gonna show you the code to connect it to the uh, Arduino. Okay. So um, oh, by the way, to go to this picture here. So uh, here is Node.js and here is like the the, the Arduino, which is this little thing, which is the library to connect to the Arduino. And I'm also using Socket.io. And uh, we and this is the part over here which which connects my node to my HTML5 game because I need to push the changes of the potential meter. So uh, I I need yeah I need to push those around really really quickly all the time. Um, and Socket.io is an abstraction on top of a web web sockets, um, and it has some graceful fallbacks for browsers, really old crappy browsers for example. Um, but it's really really easy to. Um, to throw data from Node to a client and then to, it'll just work. So it's really also a nice reflection. So it's basically the same as, as Arduino for a different purpose. So Arduino is over here and uh, Socket.io is over here. Okay, so um, my my code for the um, for the Node script, um, I, I require uh, Socket.io and I also require Arduino. And then um, I create a new board. Um, I create a new pod and the pod is like a, a sensor. I don't know why I call it, uh, oh yeah, I call it port for potential meter. So this is like a sensor, and it defaults to um, all the correct ports. Um, um, yeah. At the end of the video, you'll get a video of, of me showing the Arduino board and everything, how I connected it. Uh, but it defaults to A01. 
the analog reading port for, for sensors on your Arduino. So uh, th this is all the code you need. And then, lip, oh, I'm not using this anyway. So let me comment it out. So all the, the comment it out code is just me playing around for something else, which isn't uh, connected to the to this potential meter reading. So over there I say, um, I say broadcast, and broadcast what broadcast does, it, it will read the the value of the potentiometer over and over again. So every time the the, the potentiometer from my Arduino has a new value, it will send uh, it will send it over to Node, and then I will change the value to um, I will change the the, the pot val variable to that value, and then every 20 milliseconds, so that's like on top of my head like 50 times a second, it will send. The, the current value of pot file to all the sockets, so all the websites connected to my node processing process using Socket.io. So this is all I need to, to send all this, uh, to, to send the value uh, over to, to my uh, to my HMO5 game. And I also need, a, need to make an adjustment over there. So as you can see, I commented out all the, the logic involving the keyboard stuff. Because I'm, I'm not using that anymore, I'm, I'm using the solution for Arduino. And I'm also commenting out where I need to calculate that. So now what, I, what I'm doing is... Where did I put that code? Oh, over here. So I, I've created this new, this new little piece of code. So here I made a new variable called angle, which is now out, outside of the draw function. And over here I update it when I receive new data from my node process. And then I uh, do some minor... Um, tweaks to that number so that I can easier work with it. And then over here, um, I don't have to do any of this anymore. I can just say angle over here, which gets updated quite a lot. It gets updated like, like yeah, 50 times a second. And uh, I have like 60 FPS or so, I, f I guess. I'm not sure. Depends on the browser, I guess. Um, so it, it's going really smooth, really pretty, pretty smooth. Okay, so let me just boot it up real quick. Oh, it's, all, it's running over here. And, and uh, here's the URL. Okay, so here is the. Um, oh, I, I, I was doing my keyboard stuff, but that obviously won't work. So I'm now connecting. And I will reboot this process. Okay, it says it's running. And now I'm twisting my potential meter on my Arduino board. Okay, so over here is my Arduino. And uh, you can see a bunch of cables at the, at the bottom over here. And then you can see a lot of uh, LED lights at the, on my breadboard over here, which I'm not using for this. So you only have to look at those three cables over here. Um, so one is connected to the ground, one is connected to the 5 volt input, and one is connected to the, the A0 reading uh, analog reading port on your Arduino. Okay, and here's my, my potential meter. So I connected those three cables blip, to to this thing over here. Okay, and I'm not sure if we can get this in 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 image, but when I uh, when I twist this number, I'm not twisting it, and then it'll do its magic on the screen. So yeah, that's it.